It's time now for Mark Meets, in which I speak to the biggest names in the world of politics, sports, showbiz and beyond. Tonight, Phil Campion, known to his friends as Big Phil, SAS hero, author and TV star. Following a very challenging start in life, given up for adoption as a young child, Phil went through a system of abuse and indifference within the foster and care system, but he refused to be defined by it. Leaving school at the age of 16 with virtually no qualifications, it was the Royal Hampshire Regiment who rescued him and set him on the path to where he is today. In 1997, he was one of a handful of soldiers in the British Army to pass both the Royal Marines Commando course and the Parachute Regiment's infamous P Company to earn his right to wear the famous Red Beret. But that wasn't enough for this ambitious young man who passed selection and joined 22 SAS, the Special Air Service, the UK's top tier Special Forces unit serving with D Squadron. His biography, Born Fearless, became an instant bestseller and led to a Sky TV series called Big Phil's War. More books followed, including best-selling fiction in the form of charismatic Steve Range and the Blackstone 16. It's quite a life. It's quite a career, and I'm delighted to say that Big Phil Campion joins me now. Hi, Phil. Thanks for having me. Um, I would shake your hand, but I don't want it crushed. <laughs> I won't crush it, mate. I'll be all right. Uh, I'll be what a job. story. Would you change a thing? No, but I would learn from quite a lot. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's the important thing. Do you know what I mean? We all do stuff that we're probably not proud of sometimes, and probably we could have done a little bit better at the time. But so long as you learn from that, for me, it's okay. Do you know what I mean? So that's, that's, yeah. that's one of my big things, is I try and... You know, fool me once, fool me, fool me twice, you know, proper fool well, me. Well, I've, I've got to say that, that Mrs. Dolan, who's no military expert, but uh, we've got a sort of mantra in the house, which is every mistake once. Yeah, that's it. Every mistake once. You know, look, I've made, I've made some massive howlers in my time, all right? From school, you know, I got, I got expelled from two schools I got expelled from. You know, I messed up an opportunity to go to a public school, you know, where I was there having my education paid for me. I messed all that up. But actually, have I messed it all up? If it, it's my end game, is to help other people by, by my experiences. Do you know what I mean? So look, every cloud in my, li- in my life has got a silver lining, do you know what I mean? Mm. And I believe there's always a positive to be had from a negative. How did a place at private school come about? I did, you know those little tick tests with little legs? Remember, yeah. you had to tick them down, it was like an IQ thing, wasn't it? Yeah. And I did really well in it. But classroom-wise, I had the attention span of a goldfish, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And not a very clever one. So, I, <laughs> I, seriously, I was sitting there, I had class go, it'll be fun, it'll be fun, break time. Mm. I just couldn't concentrate, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But so, I, intellectually, I stupid, intellectually you were there, but emotionally yeah. you weren't. No, no, not, not even emotionally, I just had no interest in it. Yeah. The stuff they were teaching me, I didn't want to learn. Yeah. So I, I really had no interest in it whatsoever. But it's not the end of the world, do you know what I mean? And even though I left school with a cycle proficiency, and that was about it, do you know what I mean? I've, I've managed to become a Times best-selling author. I've done this, I've done that, I've done the other. Do you know what I mean? My, my big thing is never give up. Do you know what I mean? And if you want something bad enough, just, just go for it. Do you know what I mean? Don't aim down there, because you'll hit down there somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Aim up there, and then you'll probably get around here somewhere. But it's better than down there, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Is it ever too late? No. No, never too late. And I think, you know, I've, 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 seen, I've seen all sorts of people change their lives around at different periods in their life. It took me a long time to, to, to really sort myself out. Do you know what I mean? I've only really come out of the woods in the last few years. I've had my troubles right up to recent. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's been, it's, I've been a roller coaster. Do you know what I mean? But I like to think I've, I've plateaued a little bit now. What I love about you is that you won't be defined by either the positives or the negatives in your life. It's, it's just one big melting pot for you. Uh, but let's talk about the childhood that you had that was not easy. You were not born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Um, Your mum gave you up for adoption. Do we know the circumstances around that? (sighs) Something around, because I did meet my adopted family later on in my life, so I did get the sort of like backstory. Again, I said to them, look, let's not go digging all that up. Let's move with what we've got now. So we met, so I didn't get the full story. Mm. They were in tough times. It was taboo then to have two or three kids and all that sort of stuff as a single mother. My old man done the off, he'd done the runner, do you know what I mean? The nan had the older brother, which obviously I didn't meet till later on in my life. It was a right old mess. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So she, I ended she up wasn't getting, able up... to give you the life that she'd have wanted to give you? No, I don't think she could have given me any life, to be honest, in, in her opinion. So, so that's it, I did the off. Unfortunately, the, the family that I went to were abusive. He broke my nose several times. When, he let, when she finally forced him out the door, she turned on me. Do you know what I mean? I ended up in, in a series of children's homes where I you know, was subject to not just physical abuse, but sexual abuse as well. So, no, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad... But, you know, and I always say this, and I'll say this to people when I do my after dinners, and I say, look, the first lesson I learnt, really, was a harsh one of my old man, and it was that if you keep still while you're getting a beating, 
you'll soon lose interest and it won't go on for as long as it does if you struggle. All right? Now, that's a harsh lesson to learn, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Especially but it's from, a, positive. from a fighter like you. Uh, this is a counterintuitive advice, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, it, I learned that I could almost control the temperament of his, of his anger yeah. by cutting it, nipping it in the bud and calling it a day. Do you know what I mean? And then he'd lose interest and it'll go over. And in my own mind, I've had a win then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's a positive from a negative. It's a honking negative. It's not a good negative, but it's a positive. So what it? you would, you would sort of basically uh, accept the attack. You would, you would just take the spray. Yeah, you're not going to stop it. You're not going to stop yeah. it. But what you could do is almost control it by, by acting as well. If you fought against it, yeah. it came worse and harder and longer. Yeah. Yeah. If you went down, took it, curled in, yeah. fetal position, that sort of stuff, yeah. gave up, <laughs> took the breath, you know what I mean? Bang. What, what age were you when you entered uh, this, uh, this family setting? Uh, oh, first, I mean, first, yeah, first, yeah. I mean, how old were you, do you think? When you went to this first family? About six months, because literally I, I left, I, I should have gone You were a baby. You went yeah, 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 baby. Baby. And so it's in, uh, growing up then as a little boy, that's when the attacks began. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I vividly remember him. He, I mean, to me, he used to tower above me. Yeah. And I remember he used to sit on top of me. He used to, he used to make nosebleed. And he used to get older. Oh, stop it bleeding. And I was, you know what I mean? Like, All right, we'll go with this. You know what I mean? It, 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 honestly. And you, you would have been, what, five or six or seven when... when yeah, um, around that age, I suppose. When the violence yeah. began. Yeah, 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 when it was at the height of it, really. And are you angry towards... No, your, do you know what? Your... I, sat, I sat with him two or three weeks before he died. An old man, I could have shoved the pillow in his face. I could have got all vindictive about it. I could have let him know all about it and popped him off. No, 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 no. You know, I'd let him have his dignity. I let him slip this world. I don't have no recourse to it. What's the point? Do you know what I mean? Look, I always say now, I haven't got enough time on this planet for the people I love, let alone the ones I don't. All right, and that's true, yeah. okay? That's true. I don't like going back into the past. I don't like digging stuff up. I don't yeah. like dragging it all with me because it's luggage is behind. And, and, and that's exactly what I also don't want to do here today because we're yeah. here to celebrate your incredible career. But obviously our audience will be very concerned about the fact that you left this uh, awful, abusive family setting. They were supposed to take care of you. They did the opposite. Um, and then you went into the care system, which was as bad, if not worse. It was. But look, as well, as well I, I was a little git, a little B-word, all right? <laughs> right? I was honking. I was poorly behaved, all right? And I'm not saying I deserved what I got, but I certainly antagonised it. Mm. Do you know, and some of the beatings I got when I was in, when I was in, the, in, the, in the secure units and all that sort of stuff were, were, were basically them defending themselves from me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I would lose it then. I was getting a little bit bigger. I realised I could get hold of people and start taking them down and that sort of stuff. And so, yeah, I, I, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, you've got to be... And what about, I mean, on the, the, the sexual abuse side, w did, you, did you ever have recriminations? Did you ever beat the crap out of any, any of those no, perpetrators? No, uh, You must have been tempted to. Purely, yeah, yeah, I was very tempted. It, but it was just, it was such a shock to me when that happened. Mm. It was such a shock. Yeah. And it was such something I couldn't even talk about to anybody. Yeah. Because it had been put in my head, you know, if you do talk about this, you know what I mean, they're not going to believe you and you're going to make your situation a lot, lot worse than what it is now. And it wasn't rosy at that time, do you know what I mean? So you're thinking, well, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll just, just roll with this, whatever I've got to do to get out of it, do you know what I mean? Try and get away. And like I say, I left the kids home actually when I was 15 to try and get away with it and he followed me in. That was one of the reasons I went to the army in the end because once I went through the gates of the camp... You were safe. Completely. Gone. Do you know what I mean? And did you ever need therapy or counselling to address some of those things that happened to you? When you Never were... had it. Probably nowadays, you know, I'm a massive advocate for mental health and probably, you know, I've done things the hard way. I've done things by talking to myself in the mirror. Do you know what I mean? I always say to people, you know, people say you're mad if you talk to yourself. I say you're mad if you don't. All right? And I will look in the mirror and tell myself, Phil, sort yourself out, son. Do you know what I mean? So I do have a little bit of that. I do realise that there probably has been a little bit of mental health in my life, which has been overlooked. Mm. I like to think that I've, I've pulled through and I'm at the other side of that, you know, finally, you know, at the age of 53, I'm, I'm, I'm ploughing ahead and, you know, I'm living, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fulfilling one of my promises, which I would help other children, you know, to, to live from my experiences. And obviously I'm the champion of the cadet force, which I'm extremely proud of. And that's, that's one of the things that, you know, I really, you know, want to see young people have it tough nowadays. You know, yeah, it's, it's tell me about what, what is the cadet force and, and what so does it's the it, army cadet force. It do? It's a uniform, it's a uniform service. It's not about getting kids in the army. Mm. It's about giving the qualifications that perhaps they don't get at school. It's about giving them things like Duke of Edinburgh's award. Brilliant. A little bit of first aid, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of discipline. Okay. Yeah. In, in a, in a way that's formatted so that they understand it nowadays. Cause you know, we, correct we, uniform, walk in a straight line, exactly, make your bed, turn up on time with the right kit, doing the right Thing, do you know what I mean? Yes. That sort of stuff, okay, which perhaps they don't get so much of at school. And don't forget, you're a volunteer to be there, all right? You don't have to come to, to parade. So if you're showing up, you're making the right moves, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? Yes. And all we want to do is turn young people into decent young adults. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't care if they join the army or not. It's not my aim is to get people into the army. I really, you know, there's lots of people come through our doors that, that do all sorts of great stuff in their lives. Do you know what I mean? Few will go in the army. 
That's the nature of the beast, okay? So if parents are watching who have got kids that might benefit from being in the cadet force, how do they, how do they enroll? Does it cost money? Just go down to your local... It doesn't cost a lot of money. I'm not sure exactly what it costs, but just go down to your local um, cadet office. They're, they're, they're easy enough to find. You can Google it. They've got yeah. all sorts of social media going on. Just pitch up. It would be a lot cheaper than summer camps or skiing holidays. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, uh, you'd Basics. be lucky to pay more than a bullseye for a summer camp. And that's, that's fed water, looked after activities and all that caper. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, no, it's good stuff. It really is, it really is a seriously decent organisation. that get to do a lot of really cool stuff and get qualified while they're doing it. Yeah. So what about your entrance into the military? You got in, you were physically safe at that point. Yep. What else did it do for you? It gave me a belonging. It gave me. It gave me almost a family. Do you know what I mean? And you know, I realised. You know, I'm, I'm I'm part of something now. I've never really been part of anything. Yeah. I've been banged from pillar to post. I've done this. I've done that. I've done the other. I was part of something now. Do you know what I mean? And it only. It was and only maybe they, they wanted you. You were somewhere absolutely, that you were wanted. Absolutely. You know, you you you, you, you your behaviour dictated how you were treated. Do you know what I mean? You, you could you, you could perform, you could excel, or you could drop out. There's those are your choices in life, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? So I I I took the bull by the horns. I always wanted a soldier. I loved it, and the more I got into it, and I remember one of my first time majors said, Phil, you've got a job that you like, you're never going to work. And I thought, I like this job, it's not work, is it? Do you know what I mean? I love it, I absolutely love it. So I, I, had a, I had a tremendous time. And what about this ambition? Why were you never satisfied with your rank? You just kept reaching for... Uh, it wasn't know. rank, I didn't want rank. I right. never wanted responsibility. Right. I just wanted to be the tip of the sword. I wanted to kick yeah. the door. You wanted you know to be, and you wanted to be I wanted to be the man in the was, top, the top, yeah, yeah. Uh, the I top want, I wanted to be the best at what I did, do you know what I mean? It's just... You know, why does a premiership footballer want to be a premiership footballer? He wants to play at that elite level. He wants to test himself as much as he can. I was very fortunate to be allowed to do my commando course, P company and selections. You know what I mean? And I, 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 I passed them all. And I enjoyed them all. I loved it. Do you know what I mean? I, I genuinely, genuinely enjoyed it. Do you know what I mean? So it's not, it wasn't a, it, it wasn't, I wasn't thinking along those lines. I'm thinking I want to just move to the next step and I want to get there as quickly uh, as possible. And what was the difference between you and the other <laughs> lads, the other lads that didn't quite make the cut? What was the difference? I don't know. Some of, there's all different reasons. Guys can come off fail because they're, they're injured. Mm. Literally, some guys... So it can will be bad, bad luck. Yeah, of course it can. And some guys can, can literally turn around and say, actually, you haven't looked at this, this isn't genuinely for me. I had a very good friend of mine, a very competent soldier, very good soldier. Married, couple of kids, went... Pff, this gen got, got right through into the course and went, this genuinely isn't for me. And fair play to him as well, do you know what I mean? Because to walk off a course like that, you know, he, he made the decision. He didn't try and bluff his way out. He's sort of like, no, 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 I'm going. No, I've had enough. And that's, I'll show a lot of respect for that, do you know what I mean? How much did your physical strength help you in the military? Because, I mean, even now, we've got footage of you boxing, right? You're still an absolute beast of a, of a character. Right? I'm a bit tubby, man. <laughs> you, but I, I, no, I, I enjoy me training. I've, I've, always, I've, always wanted to, I've always wanted to train. I've always enjoyed what I do, you know, in, in the gym and all that sort of stuff. It gives me purpose. Look, I lost me way a few years ago. And I only started boxing. My first fight was about 45 years old. Right? Amazing. And I literally had lost a bit of direction and I've been working quite hard on all these overseas contracts and all that sort of stuff. And boxing really put something back into my life that I didn't have anymore. And it was, it was a sense of purpose. It was a direction. It was achievement. Yeah. You know, I was, I was forever up against people. I'm never going to reach the top of the tree boxing. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a good try getting up there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's something, again, I've got something progressive in my life. So was it a bit like, we did it have parallels with, with that time in the military? Back to discipline. Absolutely. Back, but, back back to, to... but back to being the bottom of the heap again as well. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Back to, back to basics. I am, I am the crow in the ring. Like, I don't know how to fight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And gradually, you know, the peacock put a lot of work into me. I went to MTK Marbella. I was really lucky. I've, I've sparred with Hatton. I've done all sorts of really decent stuff boxing-wise. So I was very, very lucky. Yeah. And a lot of that came off, off the cap. Tell me about sparring with Hatton. I mean, well, he's, he's, that the he's done the pass right? And I'll tell you what, for, for a man yeah. who sort of like comes up to there on me, <laughs> right, he clouted me. And I was like, boom, where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's insane. Was that, was that when he was like, you know, off-season, when he was on the Guinness? Or was he was He, he was, that he was sort of like 50-50, one foot in his camp, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, otherwise we wouldn't yeah, be having yeah. this conversation. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'd, I'd love to. Do you know? I'd, I'd, I'd love to have a go with, with one of the big guys. Like, do you know what I mean? I'd love to. Who just would have you a little... fight? Who would you fight? Well, I'll tell you what. what, what, I'll tell what Jake Paul's watching right now. I love Jake Paul. I love go. him. Jake Paul, yeah, I love yeah. you. I love you, sir. Yeah, yeah. You're my snack. You're my snack <laughs> on the way up the ladder, right? Okay. I'd love to have a move around with Tyson Fury. I'd love, just just because the man is is such a his, his knowledge of boxing is so, so intense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, he's going to knock me about. He's going to knock me about. I'm going to learn so much from from that. Do you know what I mean? Well, we we talked about the fact that you 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 are uh, a great physical specimen, and, and there you are again now. You're you're boxing, but you were a physically tough guy throughout your career in the military. You need a 
strong body, don't you? You need a strong constitution. You've got to be robust. Robust. Be, it's not above anybody. A lot of this stuff comes from in here. Well, that's what I want to ask. A lot you. of how, stuff comes from here. How much of it is mental? And how much of your success in the military was was you being fearless, which is the theme of your book? Yeah, it's a lot of it is, is, is mental preparation, mental state of mind. One foot. You know, when you do some of these longer marches, it's one foot in front of the other, and it hurts. It does hurt. I'll be a liar to say it doesn't hurt. Do you know what I mean? But it's just having, it's just having that to, to keep going, to keep going, to keep going. You know, when you go to the jungle, yeah. it's monkey see, monkey do. And if monkey stops, monkey goes home. Those are the rules. It's not, it's not a difficult thing to do. In your own mind, you've got to be prepared and ready for that. And wanting to go forward. If you don't want to be there, it's going to show up eventually. Do you know what I mean? So is that, that, that's, that's just the way it is. So, you know, obviously you need to be fairly fit. But I'd say that, the, you know, the average soldier who can pass all his fitness tests with ease, all right, shouldn't have a problem with selection because selection on, on, on these other courses are going to get you up to a stage where you should be able to pass. So that's what I'm saying. The big mistake young lads make is they, they, they overtrain for these courses. They turn up, they're twitching the muscles, they're like a racehorse. Like, ding, 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 oh, there we go. <laughs> and they break in the first five minutes. Like, oh, no, calm down, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Calm down with it. Uh, you've faced the ultimate peril, which is the enemy in combat. Yep. So how, how, do you, how do you handle those situations? It's the old parachute thing, isn't it? It's, it's knowledge dispels fear. You know, I'm not thinking about necessarily being killed or I'm not thinking necessarily about what, what could the consequences could be. I'm thinking about what we've prepared for, what our orders said we were to be doing, how we were going to negate things if they went wrong. So, you, you know, you, you're up, you're ready. It's you're an deep. intellectual process. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's absolutely, it's, it's in you. So by the, so by the time the, the green light comes on or whatever it is that's going to signal you're stepping over that line into the, the world of honkingness, all right, then that is... You know, you're prepared for it. You're ready. You got a job, After, you got afterwards, a job to afterwards, I mean, afterwards, you can come away from some of these things if it's been a close one yeah. and think to yourself, oh, and you're in the Glad to Be Alive club then, isn't you? Yeah. you know I mean, have a little bit of disco going on and all that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, the actual job needs to be done. You're trained to do that. You know, if a steeplejack looked at a tower and got scared, he wouldn't go up it, would he? Yeah. He knows what he's got to do. He puts his ladder on, he ties it up, he goes up it, he clips himself on. He's doing it. He's got his own method of doing it, isn't he? And it's, not, it's the same with soldiering. The Glad to Be Alive Club. I think that's the name of your next book, I've got to say. <laughs> um, you've shown a lot of respect on social media to former professional boxer uh, and mayor of Kiev, Vitaly Klitschko, who, along with his brother Vladimir, has joined the front line fighting in Ukraine. Um, I think they actually spoke to Alistair earlier today. Take a look at this. We need much more weapons. We need much more help. We have to stop the Russians. A whole world surprise how tough Ukrainian army defend our homeland. How, uh, because Russians have plans in a couple of days to occupy the capital of Ukraine. They have a good plans, but uh, big plans about Ukraine, but our soldiers destroyed all plans of Russians. As former fighters, I tell you, it's very important weapons, but much more in the fight, important spirit. I explain why our army is so strong against Russians, because Russians army, Russian soldiers fighting for the money. We are Ukrainian, defend our children, defend our families, defend our homeland and our future. Big Phil, is it almost game over for Vladimir Putin in Ukraine? Mm, no, I, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Look, this, I think it's going to be protracted a little bit longer than what we're thinking here. You know, I've been over to Ukraine myself in the last, and you know, this time last week I was in Ukraine. You know, um, the resolve of the people is absolutely incredible. Do you know, I, well, from, from the minute you go over the border, there's farmers digging in, defending the land with pitchforks and that. Do you know what I mean? They're absolutely stood the light, ready to go. Some of them haven't got guns or nothing. Do you know what I mean? And they're building bunkers on their houses. You know, you, you got, you got. So I think the resolve of the people. It's going to be what keeps this thing alive, almost. Will Putin give up? I don't, I don't think he's in a position to put, give up, but I do think he needs an out. I do think he's searching for an out. 
I think he realises, I think he must realise, but if he doesn't realise, I mean, there's something seriously wrong with him, right? He must realise by now, I've made the right mess of this, I undercalculated it, I thought all the Russian tweakers were going to come on board straight away. They haven't. Do you know what I mean? And, it, and he must be looking at it. Now, I'm not a strategic person. I'm a door kicker, all right? So when it comes to you know, like how things play out and the, the doctrine behind it and all that sort of stuff, that's not really my business. But what, what is my business is, is what Klitschko's saying there. The resolve of the people. The resolve of those people fighting is, is second to none. They're absolutely, you're, not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not sort of like, you're not playing at it there. You are absolutely dug in, in your council estate, on your turf, defending it from people who are coming in armoured vehicles. That's on another level. Having said goodbye to your missus, right, look, go on, I'll see you in a bit, all right, you go home, you go across the border, I'm going to stay here and I'm fighting. And it's going to be win, lose or draw for me, do you know what I mean? And it's probably not going to be pretty. And they know that, and they're still there. And I think that has been one of the key things in this whole thing. It's been an underestimation by Vladimir Putin that these people would actually stand there and fight. And I've got nothing but respect for the Ukrainian people who are there doing that in their country. And briefly, some suggestion that the Russian soldiers themselves are not necessarily all on board with the project. I don't think they are. If you use a press gang man, you'll get a press gang to work, right? You, you, they, they don't, a lot of them don't, don't realise what they're up to. They, don't, they, don't, they certainly wouldn't have gauged what they were going to come up against. You know. And you don't, you don't just break into these towns. Do you know what I mean? You can shell them, you can do this, you can do that, but they're going to be defended. And it's going to go down to fist and boot in some cases. Do you know what I mean? And that, you know, if you're, if you're not fully dedicated to that, you know, they're, they're over there because they've been told to be there, some of them, these conscripts. And that's and that. different for... That's a from, massive from fight, difference to the guys going, I'll tell you what, you're in my back garden now. I yeah. want you out of here. Do you know what I mean? It's a different fight, well, isn't it? Let me uh, just assure you that I will never enter your back garden, OK? <laughs> Only, only if invited. <laughs> I'll catch you on my ring doorbell. Yeah, too right. <laughs> and listen, I'll, I'll bring some, some cold beers with me, OK? Do, mate, do, mate. The barbecue's uh, on. The greatest privilege to have you on the show. No, thanks for having me. Um, uh, listen, will you come thanks back so and join us on the panel? I'd love to, I'd love to. Because yeah, uh, uh, you're an amazingly interesting man with an amazing life, a great career, which continues to this day. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Motivational speaking, Cadet Force, TV shows, books. Yeah, my own radio know. station, Force Radio. Force uh, Radio? Force Radio is doing extremely well at the moment. Really? Uh, How can there. you hear Force Radio? You can, you can get, download the app, the Force yeah. Radio app. Brilliant. You can go to forceradio.net and you can hear my breakfast show, the Stand To Breakfast Show, every morning from 6 to 10. Is that right? Every morning from 6 to 10, you'll hear my dulcet tones having a right old pop with life. And it's fun. It's fun. It's positive. It's a, it's a great. We, we, we're on a million minutes a, mi- a month already. Listen, that's which incredible. is all right. Do you know what I mean? For, forces, force, force radio, force, force. not forces. No, there you go. Singular. Force, force, force radio. radio, force radio, force radio. Breakfast. Dot net. Well, there radio, you, go. Dot you know, net. you talked about being in the Happy to Be Alive Club. Your show should be called the Happy to Be Awake Club. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got Who Dares Sins. We've got all sorts on there. No, it's all right. I'll tell you, we have a good laugh on there. Now you're talking. It's a good place to be. Giving Eamon home to run for its money. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, listen, Phil, what a treat to have you. Do come and see us again soon.